Hi guys, it's Tim with Inflatable Office, and I wanted to show you um, something that you can do in your WordPress with Elementor and Inflatable Office. Um, this is an example of uh, our website, our on a web page on our site that uh, we were working on, and we're using the same technology that you guys are using um, for our own stuff. So. Uh, I'm going to scroll down here to the form. This is just a simple form that was created in Elementor. I'm going to click on it here. Uh, and so um, we made a form. Nothing special about the name of the form. Um, and then we have these different inputs here. So we have name, just a text field. We label it with name. That's so that, that's what they see. Uh, placeholders, what's in it here. Um, simple stuff. Uh, if I click to advanced here, this is where it gets interesting. Uh, so I have an ID listed here. So I put in this ID because um, I this ID is something that we understand in our system and we break that first and last name apart and, and use it appropriately inside of Inflatable Office or Event Office. So uh, if you want to pull in name for some last name, you would want to use this as an ID. OK, this is the important part right here. That's important. Uh, let's look at the next one. Email. Same sort of thing. Very simple. None of this really matters here uh, until we get here lowercase email that corresponds with um, inflatable office event office uh, a field that we're looking for uh, there's a variety of these fields these fields can be found by looking at um, any of your quote request forms um, or contact us forms um, pretty much any of those uh, names for those uh, fields in those will be uh, interchangeable will be you, you can use them in here and they'll pass that information to us. Uh, phone, uh, same thing, we chose cell phone. You can choose office phone or home phone as well uh, if you wanted. And then the other cool thing that I'm doing here in this case is tags. Uh, so we wanna put like a customer tag on here. So again, none of this matters, but this is different. This is hidden. So there's no actual field here. Uh, I just wanna pass a value that I wanna keep track of. Uh, so if I go to advanced, you will see here cust tags is the ID. That's how I know what it is when it comes across. And then I put a default value in. This is the value that I want it to equal. Um, and you can do cool things with that. You can do dynamic stuff. So, um, you know, things that aren't maybe set yet, um, but get set in that moment, you can choose. Uh, I could add more things here if I want. You just click add item to add more. Um, and that's all you have to do. Um, Actions after submit, you can do additional stuff here. Um, we have ours set to collect submissions. I think that just goes into Elementor. And honestly, I, don't, I wouldn't even have to do that. I leave it on. Uh, in this case, I'm doing something unique. I'm redirecting. You wouldn't have to do that either. Uh, when, they, when they submit it, it goes into our, it's gonna go into Elementor because we have collect submissions, but it's also gonna send it uh, to our system. And because you've entered these things appropriately, it's going to put a lead into Inflatable Office for you. And uh, then you can work with that lead or set up automated tasks to do stuff with that lead. So in this case, uh, for us, we use that tags because we want to know where it came from and how what we want to do with it. So if, if they came through this page, we're going to set, we have a whole automated track that we're going to send information to them based upon what they were looking at here, okay? Does that make sense? Um, the other thing that we're doing in this case is we wanna take them directly to registering. So we actually did a redirect. So actions after submit, one of them is redirect. Uh, you can pick whatever you want in here, add different ones. Um, so the redirect one, when you pick one, it shows up down here so you can set up additional settings. Uh, so you can see what I'm doing is sending them to the signup page and I'm passing some data, some of that same data back uh, through um, and into, and this isn't actually right. Let me refresh this because I think this has been updated. I'm passing the same data over to that page and then that page is going to grab that data and use it for something else. So, but let me show you here because I, I, I'm pretty sure that that wasn't correct. I think that was an older version, yeah. So the way you have to do it if you're going to pass that data is field ID, field space ID equals and then, so you can see the format of that. Uh, that was something that wasn't clear to me. So I thought maybe it'd be useful. I don't know if any of you guys are gonna do a redirect or not, but you could. Um, same sort of thing if you chose email, 
uh, if I choose email, I now have an email option down here and I can pass fields into whatever. Um, so uh, I'm not gonna do that because I don't want it to email me. Um, but I thought that that would be pretty useful for you. Uh, the only other thing that I wanted to show you was, and I think because I refreshed here, we're gonna see it. Uh, I have this item five in here. Uh, and I, I didn't label it because I don't want it labeled. Um, but that's just this checkbox here. See this checkbox? I chose a checkbox and I put in what text I wanted. And then this is a pipe, um, which is like shift and backslash. Um, and then uh, the value is one. That's not super important. But what this is, if we switch over to the advanced, you see I'm sending this as the OK to text field. So um, a lot of the rules on texting require that you ask people if they want to accept text from you or not, similar to email subscribes and stuff like that it used to be. Um, they're just getting a little more crazy about the texting one uh, as far as governments go. And so you should be putting that on there. Uh, if you don't put it on there, it's gonna come in empty and then we will never text to them. So that's an important field to have there. Um, I wanted to do it as a hidden field originally, uh, but I realized I'm not allowed to, unfortunately. Uh, I think it would be different if you had the text here set up to say, you know, enter your phone number and we will send you a text message. At that point, I think you could probably make it a hidden field and do kind of what I did up here where you set, um, you know, set the ID appropriately, which was okay to text. If you see that, okay to text is the ID. Um, but then up here, um, the default value would have been a one uh, so that we knew that we're just saving it as a one as being on and a zero as being off. So that's how you would set that up if you're going to do it that way. If it's not very clear that you're gonna be using their information to text them, then I would recommend putting in something like that in. Uh, and I'm, you know, I use yes, text me specials um, to try to get them to check it because I want them to, because I'm not allowed technically to have it checked by default. Um, so uh, if you really wanna gather, and the problem with this is we're gonna find so if you have additional forms, if you have one that's uh, talking just about texting and uh, you have it hidden and it's okay because you're talking about texting when they submit it, uh, and the next time they go to a form on your site, they're doing something and they're putting also their phone number and so, uh, same information in, and you have this option here and they don't choose it, well, what it's gonna do is it's gonna update that contact record to say uh, they don't want texted anymore. And so that can be a negative thing for you um, so just be careful on how you set up those forms uh, to capture data uh, because, you know, uh, you may want to always put something very clear about texting um, so that they're not filling the form out unless uh, they, they want to get texted because giving them this option on here, I'm now opening myself up to having people turn off texting for themselves um, and when they really maybe don't mean it. So, uh, but that's a, a, a risk I'm gonna take on this, I think, just to see how it goes. Uh, and, you know, possibly I'll, I'll change it around later. But the big thing is I wanted to show you how to do this uh, through Elementor Inflatable Office with our WordPress stuff. We've got it set up with webhooks that we're actually pulling this data in on any form you want, as long as you put in the proper IDs. Uh, and then the one that I know I've heard people asking about is this okay to text, it's not super clear. Uh, that what that does. So I wanted to show you how to use it, uh, both uh, in a checkbox or like I said, if you want to do it hidden, you're going to do uh, something like, and you could name it. Once it's hidden, you can name it if you want. So it's clear. Uh, you're going to just do something like that. Okay. That's how you do it from a hidden uh, perspective. Okay. So I hope that helps you guys. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. We'll catch you later.